There we go. And then I'm going to share my screen so you can see the, the PowerPoint, uh, of which you're going to see the, the dome at Epcot at first until I get this up and going. Here we go. Perfect. Okay. So, hey, welcome today. My name is Lee Ivan. I'm the head coach at Action Coach Campus. And what we are is a business coaching firm. And we're relatively to the numbers to our chamber of commerce here in Washington. And it's great to have you all here today. Um, we're doing this both live and virtual. So, for those of you joining on the computer screen, welcome. Um, put your hand up if you can't hear something or you want me to repeat something. Uh, otherwise, we'll go ahead and get started on this. Um, Jackie, same for you too. Just Pause if you need to, interject. You got a water, we're good. Okay, so let's talk about team dynamics. Uh, and this will take us maybe about 30, 35 minutes. Um, but the reason why I chose team dynamics is now, especially as we're trying to figure out our way out of COVID-19 and through COVID-19, understanding how our teams work is really important to, to those of us who are our business owners, managers, um, and, and we want to really make sure that our teams are as effective as they possibly can be. So there's really six keys to building a highly effective team. And I'm just going to give you a quick summary of what they are. Now, one, provide strong leadership. Two is your common goal. Three, reach of the game. Four, you have to have action plan. Five, support risk-taking from your team members. And lastly, of course, and really most important, is that every team member has to feel 100% included and involved in your team. So let's, let's talk about strong leadership. So what, I'm what I'm going to be doing with is, is, is talking, talking to you, you as the as business, business owner, owner uh, team, team leader, leader business, business manager. manager. You know, my you know, uncle used to say, say, you can see my little postage stamp screen. My uncle used to say, when you point a finger at somebody, you got three pointing back towards yourself. And so let's talk about our own mindset for a minute. We know that the cycle of business. We're the owner, we want to create this, this dynamic business, right? And many of us have businesses for similarly the same reasons. We want to have more time to spend with our families, more time to be able to truly enjoy uh, rock climbing and stuff like um, and more money. So as owners of those businesses, we have to focus on our teams. As the owner, you really want to spend a lot of time educating and developing your teams because your teams in turn will take care of your customers. If your customers are truly being treated well and they come back again and again and again. Hey, Lee, let me, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we've got, we've got a chat and we're getting a lot of feedback. Um, okay. This is, uh, if anyone in the room with Lee, disable your mic uh, to reduce. I wonder, because my, my mic is off. Okay. okay. Um, TV, maybe? I don't know. Is there, is there oh, volume right. on the TV? Noel, oh, looking good. Keith, can you hear us? Okay. Is that all right? Thumbs up there, Keith. And there's someone else to be let into there, Lee. Oh, is there? Oh, there. We'll take a look at this. I'm not seeing that. Kent Martin waiting to be let in. All right, how do we find that one? Hey, we're going to pause. Oh, yeah, there's someone else that wants to join. I'm trying to find how to let them in here. So that's from Noel. So, okay, we're going we're gonna to minimize this just for a second. And how are we going to do this? Sorry about that. We're gonna yeah, let's go up here. There we go. There we go. All right, technology. I'm a little. Uh... There we go. Ken wants to come in. We're not Ken in. Sorry about that. Okay. Ken should be joining us. Perfect. All right. Let's go back to our our PowerPoint here. Okay. How's it looking, Barry? Good. good. Yeah, you know what? My mic is going up and down. I'm just going to shut okay. It down. Okay. Okay. So um, let's go back to this. So, as the owners, we take care of our teams, and with our teams, they will take care of our customers. <laughs> you guys were all seeing who wants to join in here. Let's let's minimize that. There we go. Perfect. Okay. And then uh, our customers, of course, are going to keep coming back and again because of the way our teams treat them, and that, of course. Um, creates our business. And then it cycles back around and our business takes care of us as the owners. Now remember when you have your teams, 
it, it might be easy for us to complain about our teams, but our teams are really, like when you look in the mirror, they're a reflection of us. As business owners, our teams are a reflection of us. Sometimes that's a pretty hard pill to swallow, um, but no different than our bank accounts, the businesses that we create, the relationships that we have in our life, the people that we surround ourselves with, you know, you've heard like attracts like. Well, in this case, our teams will mirror our behavior. So that's why we want to spend just a little bit of time talking about our own mindset. You know, Robert Schuler, if you've been around for a while like I have, remember Robert Schuler, he always had an expression, if it's going to be, it's up to me. And that is so true when developing your team. I want to spend a minute on point of power. This is a, a thing that we like to talk about because as business owners, we always need to be aware of our point of power. Now, what I mean by that is that we can wake up in the morning and we can be below the point and our attitude is that of blame. We make excuses. We're in denial of our situation. We've all been that, been there. Um, where we want to be is above the point. We want to take ownership for our actions. We want to be accountable. We want to be responsible for our businesses, for our employees and their actions. We, we take on that point of power. We're, we're living above the point. The cool thing about that is that when we're below the point, we feel powerless, right? We, we feel like we're drained. We're psychologically spent. We've all had days like that. Um, but when we're above the point, we're feeling completely ch in charge. We're, we're, our batteries are charged. We're hitting on all eight cylinders. And that's the area we want to be. So listen to yourselves. Listen to your talk with your employees. And what kind of words are you using? Are you saying that's out of my control? Or are you saying, no, we can fix it. It's my company. We're going to make it happen. So what's your point of power? The reason that we build teams to begin with is because there's, there's the expression from the Bible that says, give a person to fish and you feed them for a day, teach a person to fish and you feed them for a lifetime. And what that means essentially is that if we create a good team, that team will take care of our customers and in turn, they'll take care of us. So we want to teach our team members how to perform. Now you'll notice today, I'll say some things and you might say, Lee, I know I've heard that before. If you have kids at home, if you have teenagers, you hear this expression 80 times a day. Dad, I know. Mom, I know. Well, what happens when someone says that? When they say, I know, they shut down their learning. They shut down their hearing. So instead, today what I'm asking you is that rather than saying, I know, say, isn't that interesting? And then also demand that of your employees too. When, when you start telling them something and they say, no, I know, I know, they don't. That's why you're telling them. So have them say instead, isn't that interesting? Because what you have to tell your employees and your teams is important. So what is, what is the acronym for team? If you've ever had kids in high school, if they were on sports or in cheerleading, you know that team stands for together, everyone achieves more. All right, that's pretty easy. So it's time to expand our thinking. It's time to get out of our comfort zones just a little bit. Keep in mind, when we, have, when we live on the planet Earth, it's round, right? Uh, we saw that yesterday with the splashdown from outer space. That was pretty cool. First time since 1975. Well, we live on a round planet. And the, and the interesting thing about that is that we can ignore that problem, but it just goes right around the horn and comes back to bite us in the rear end a couple of days later. So we have to, as team leaders, as uh, business owners, we have to take care of those problems when they arrive. If we don't, they just keep getting bigger. Now you'll notice if you don't take care of that problem, it's, it's as, we're, as we're going down the roadway of life, as, as we, um, there's, there's taps on the side of the road, you know, you go to Iowa City on 218 and if you're off to the right or off to the left a little bit, you hear those, that, that, those bumps on the side of the road, those are the taps. Life provides those taps to us as well. Our employees will provide those taps to us as well. And we have to heed those taps because if we don't listen to the taps, we're going to hit that road sign and get hit by that two by four that supports the sign on the side of the road. If we're still not listening, if we're still not aware, that problem is going to hit us like a Mack truck. So listen for those taps and address those problems right away. You know, we didn't learn how to run right away. But first, we had to learn how to crawl and to walk. And the same is true in our businesses, in our lives, in our finances. We have to go slowly at first, and then we can pick up the speed as we go along. Now, there's an interesting formula. If you have a, a pen and a notebook, I'd like for you to write this down. It's, a, it, it's an interesting formula for change. And what it is is D times V 
plus F, it has to be greater than R. What that means is that your dissatisfaction times your vision plus the first steps that you take has all got to be greater than your resistance. In other words, if you're not happy with where you're at right now or with the way that your team is performing right now, those first steps and that dissatisfaction has got to be greater than your resistance. So what is your resistance? What do you identify as your resistance? Well, quite frankly, it might be, you know what, I'm tired. I don't want to deal with that today. That's your resistance. You know, things are okay for now. We'll just give it a couple of weeks. That's your resistance. Your dissatisfaction and your vision has got to be greater. Otherwise, change will not happen. I want to talk to you about your identity iceberg. You know, as business owners, sometimes, right, our employees look at us and they're like, you know what, I would sure like to have your life. You can come and go as you please. You're driving the nice car. You live on the golf course on the outskirts of town. What they don't see is the environment, the work that you had to go through as a business owner, the sacrifices that you've made. All they're seeing is what's above the surface, those results. They're not seeing everything that you've done to acquire those results. So keep that in mind. And on occasion, you may need to remind them of that. So why do people stay where they are? Why, why do people not want to get out of their comfort zone? Well, partly it's because of fear. Now we have an acronym that we've developed for the word fear, and it basically means false expectations appearing real. In other words, so many times with what we're doing, oh, great, thank you. I got my assistant Michelle down here. She's saying, Lee, let this person in. There we go. <laughs> thank you. Um, so it, it, false expectations appearing, oh, we got another one here. Bear's a, there we go, good deal. Hey, Bear. Um, so false expectations that are pure and real. How many times have you said to yourself, I'm not sure I want to do that. Um, I might break my computer if I try to use this software program. You don't, you won't. Um, go ahead and do it anyway. It, it, it's, it really is just a, a fear and, and it's unfounded. So why do people stay where they are? Why, why do they only earn $50,000 a year when they're capable of earning $250,000 a year? Why do some business owners stay where they're at? And, and year after year after year, they appear to be stagnant. Well, it's because of self-sabotage. It, it's really because they've heard things growing up from their parents or their mentors or aunts or uncles. Um, in fact, I was speaking with a friend of mine from Texas yesterday. He's a very successful businessman. His parents, mom and dad, when he was growing up and he grew up in the 70s, like I did, um, they were both small business owners and they told him, Doug, don't start a business because they struggled their entire life. And they said, go work for somebody else. It's got to be easier. Well, if he would have listened to that and we call that head trash, if he would have kept that in his head, he would be in the same spot that his parents were. But instead, he decided to learn how to grow a business and has become very successful. So we have to be able to dump that head trash, get rid of that self-sabotage and take on the attitude, I wanna learn every day. So here's our formula for success. For your business, for your life, it's B times do equals half. Let me explain that a little bit. Jim Rohn, a, a business motivator, would often say that after one of his seminars, a young man came up to him and said, Jim, I'm gonna make a million dollars. And Jim Rohn told him, he said, you know what, I believe you will, but." I want to see the person you are after you've made that million dollars. Because we all know that for us to have an audacious goal, right? Say I want to make a million dollars by the end of this year or in two years time or whatever that audacious goal is, say it's climbing Mount Everest. I, I've got a friend up in Iowa City who has made several attempts to climb Mount Everest. You are not going to be the same person you are today by the time you scaled Everest. You're gonna to have to go through training. You're gonna to have to go through uh, dieting. You're gonna you're gonna to have to go through some mental exercises. Uh, you're gonna to have to make several attempts first before you finally get there. And your activity is going to change. Mentally, you're going to change. And the activity that you do daily is going to have to change in order for you to have what you want your goal to be. So that's important. I would write that one down too. B times do equals have. So, to keep moving and growing, we have to ask ourselves, what is it that I fear the most? And then, of course, what you want to do is do it. 
Now, I love this little graphic of this lady scaling a mountain. My two sons love to go rock climbing. Um, however, you see that she has a helmet on and she's secured with a rope and there's someone, you know, on belay with her to help her up that, that rocky cliff. I would not do that without a guide. So if you fear something and you think you may jeopardize your life or your family or your business, then, then enroll an expert to help you out. Someone who's been there, someone that has the knowledge so that as you scale that mountain, you have a guide to keep you safe and help you along the way. But do it, don't, make sure that you do it. Don't just stay stagnant. People ask me, what's your most valuable asset? I would ask you the same thing. What is your most valuable asset? I hear things like my family, my kids, my faith, my money. Actually, your most, most valuable asset is your time. Now think about that. We can make money, we can lose money, we can make more money, we can get that back, but we can't get back time. We all have the same, uh, hang on there, we're gonna let Jen in. There we go, thanks Michelle. Um, we all have the same number of hours every day. We have, we have 24 hours. Some of us, we have friends, right? From way back when, they're making $10 an hour. We have other people that we know that make millions of dollars a year. What's the difference? The difference is how they spend their time. So how do you spend your time during the day? Do you spend it working on those not urgent and not important tasks? Do you spend it working on the urgent but not important tasks? Do you spend your time on the urgent and important tasks? Or do you try to stick to that bullseye where you ought to be and work on the things on your business that's not urgent but important. I spoke with a business owner two weeks ago and she works, she has 11 locations and she works from home now because she's able to work more on her business. And she was spending the entire week putting together employee manuals. And I'm talking two, three inches thick, three ring binders that she's going to take down to the, the copy shop and have them all printed up because she's expecting students to come back and she employs a lot of, a lot of students. And so she had to spend time working on those employee manuals but she only wrote one and now she'll make copies. She's leveraging her time by doing that. So why do you become a leader? What is, it, what is it that drives you? It's your passion and it's your sense of responsibility. That's why we do what we do. So to grow, what do we need? We need to put some pressure on ourselves. In fact, at Action Coach, we call that perturbation. I think we maybe made that word up, but it's perturbation. And what it is is like, if you put water into a pot and you want it to turn into steam, you got to turn up the heat. You, you got to turn up the fire. And as business owners, we have to learn to perturbate ourselves as well as put our employees um, under a little bit of pressure to make them perform. That's why we establish KPIs, key performance indicators. It's why we have employee manuals. It's why we have a list of expectations for our employees and for our teams. We want to put them on a little bit of pressure because once we do that, they're going to change. Okay. See the little graphic there, it says you and then emotion. When they change, they may, they may spout a little bit too, but that's to be expected. How do we improve our quality of life? Quite frankly, it starts off as we're young, we have a mentor or a teacher, it might be our parents, it might be our third grade teacher who is just all that. Um, as, as we go up the ladder a little bit, our education begins to improve, our knowledge base begins to get larger, wider. Um, after high school, we may choose to go into an apprenticeship, we may go to a university, we may go to a two-year trade school, um, but we're going to continue to learn from somebody. As our education increases, so does our belief and our dreams. All of a sudden, we're saying things like, I, I believe I could have my own business. I believe I could do this. I've learned a lot. I could do this. I can run this deal. As your beliefs and dreams begin to expand, so then do your quality of your questions. You start asking better questions, deeper questions from people who have been there before. How do I do this? I, I love this. I was on vacation back in February before COVID-19 hit and my, my uh, high school kid, he's my youngest. He's, we, we just got home from a long day at the park and, and we, it was like 10.30 at night and he came up to me and he said, dad, what are income taxes? Oh my word, <laughs> what a great question for a high school kid to ask. But as they're exposed to more, as we're exposed to more, the quality of our questions also um, begin to get better. When we have better questions, we make better decisions. And that's what really helps us out. And then what happens next is our actions are better. 
because, because of those better decisions that we made, our actions are better and ultimately what happens is the results are improved. And that's how we improve our quality of life. So let's talk about common goals. This is so important with your team. Once you got your head in the right place, which is up until now, that's what we've been talking about is you, right? Now we gotta talk about getting our team together. And our team together is, they have you as a strong leader, but now you need to entrust your team with a, a common goal. If you've ever read Jim Collins' his book, Good to Great, I think it's about 20 years old now, but if you've not read this book, it's excellent. Um, and he talks about getting the right people on the bus. And then you go one step further and get the right people in the right seats on the bus. So let's explore that just a little bit. You need to tell your team what your vision is. What do you want that team to accomplish? You have to enroll them and inspire them. You are the leader and you need to get them all engaged. They want them all on that same page without all the same desire to accomplish your goals, all right? But how do you do that? How do you enroll and inspire your team members? Well, first of all, you want every team member to participate. Remember, the last number six is 100% inclusion. So how do you get that every team member, whether it's a team of three or a team of 30, how do you get them all to participate? Well, you need, you need to have effective communication. Productive teams thrive on effective communication and you communicate through adaptability. Now there's a tool out there that the larger corporations have access to, um, and, and we, we use it here at Action Coach Campus with our clients, and what it's called is a DISC profile, D-I-S-C, DISC profile. And it's basically dominance, influence, steady, and, and uh, conscientious. Um, it's a different personality type. And what it means is that Dr. Marson in his book, The Emotions of Normal People, was able to establish these four personality types and you can be like a high D, okay, but you might lean toward an I or an S. Um, you could be a high I, but also have characteristics of an S or a D beside you. So let's talk about them just kind of individually. The dominance, if, if, if you're a Star Wars fan like I am, um, let, me, let me give you some images here. So a high D would be your Darth Vader, right? They're a dominance lifestyle, dominance personality. They come in, they want results, they're short, to the point, and out of the room. That's a high D, okay? Your eyes are like your Han Solos. They're, hey, how's it going? They're very influential people, they're persuasive people, they like a lot of big talk, big action, they, they, they love the show, they love the applause, that's your high eyes. Your eyes are, are great on a team for visionary talk, but they're just not real deep on details. Then you have your S's. Your S's are your C3PO's, okay? They're, they're people, people. Your I's and your S's are people, people, all right? They love to be around people, but your S's are rule followers. They will not break the rules. They will be on time and they are inclusive. They want to make sure that everybody around the boardroom table gets a chance to speak before a decision is made. They are very much about feelings and emotions. A D, not so much. A D wants to go to a vote right away and now on to the next topic. An S is not that way at all. They are, hey, so, so Michelle, tell us how you feel about that. Are you sure about that? Jackie, how do you feel about that? Bear, tell me how are you feeling about that? They, they want to make sure we include everybody. Now your C's, your C's are your NASA engineer types, okay? They are very analytical. They are not people, people. They would prefer to be by themselves and work on problems. In fact, a C has a very difficult time making a decision because they wanna check it, recheck it, check it again, and check it one more time before they reach a conclusion. That's a C profile but you can see how all four of these characteristics are important on your team because you need those visionaries. You need those decision makers. You might be the high D. You might say, guys, here's what your task is. I want it done by Tuesday. Okay, fine. Then you leave the room and leave it up to everybody else. Your, your I's are your visionaries. Your S's are going to make sure everybody's included. But if there's data to be done, if there's re research to be done, those C's are going to be all over it. So when we talk about adaptability, if you're a high I, you need to know how to talk to an S. You need to know how to talk to a C. So with a disc profile, if I'm a high I um, and I need to talk to a C, I'm not going to go in there with, you know, big wavy hands and visionary this and this and this. No, I'm going to sit down, 
calmly, quietly, with a cup of coffee. And I'm going to say, you know what? I've been looking at this data and I have a few questions. What can you tell me about that? And the reason that we do it this way is for I'm trying to adapt to their personal lifestyle. And I hope that they're going to adapt to my personality lifestyle as well. It, it's it's kind of like if you, um, if you were to travel to Germany and uh, you were going to go to a small village in Germany and you were going to stay there for two months. Do you expect them to speak English? No, you, you would be expected to speak German. You will get along much better with the folks in that village if you learn to speak their language. That's what the DISC characteristics are about. You learn how to speak the language of the person that you're speaking with. They in turn also speak your language. And ultimately what happens is you have a more productive team. So how does, it, how does a D uh, work with as an employee? They like the responsibility. They work best on their own, but they like to have some control. They will assume those leadership roles. They like to delegate. How does an I uh, interact? Well, as employees, they're good salespeople. They like to work with others. They like to have fun. Eyes really, really like to have fun. Um, they'll be the first person in the meeting to crack a joke. That's an I, okay? But they're also good motivators. S's, when you have them as employees, they're going to be good team players. They work well alone, but they work well with others too. Uh, they're not as forward going as those high eyes. okay? They don't need the applause, but they do want to make sure that everybody's happy. They're very, very concerned about everyone's emotions. Um, and they're slow to change because they, they're not rule breakers. And your C's, love to work alone. Like I said, think NASA engineer, okay? Give them a slide rule, they're happy. Not great on communication, but knowing that, how do you feel then when you go talk to a C and you're a high I? Well, high eyes, like, you know, hugs, you know, and they're, they're giving the elbows now with COVID-19 and, and they're, they're looking for people to bounce back the same way that they're bouncing forward and they talk to a C and they're getting like, like a brick wall. Well, why is that? Because that's not a C's personality. But if I know that I'm talking to a C, um, I, I will, I'll, I'll pick on a friend of mine. She's very analytical. And when I talk to her, I'm always talking in numbers. I'm talking in deadlines. And when I say, so what do you think of that plan? She's going to say, well, did you think of this, this, and this? That's going to be her first response. Well, before I understood her disc profile, I just expected her to be like me. You can't do that. We can't expect others to be exactly like us. That'd be pretty boring, right? So the more we understand each other, the better we're going to communicate with each other and the more effective our teams are going to be. So now once you have your common goals, once you know who the team players are, you know how everybody interacts with each other, now you have your rules of the game. You have to have those in place. And how do you put in rules of the game? Well, you have to have your standards, right? And as your company grows, you're gonna maybe create new standards and new norms for your company and for your teams. And when that happens, don't be surprised if you might lose some people along the way. And they're going to say things like, you know what, Tom, when you started this company, I was all with you, but now all of a sudden you're going in a completely different direction. I don't agree with it. Okay, that's to be expected. You're the business owner and you have to decide which direction you're going to take your company. Not all of your employees are going to follow you. Be prepared for that. You have to have an action plan. An action plan is so important because that action plan is, is going to develop the rules of the road, so to speak. It, it shows them what we're going to do, how we're going to do it. So your action plan is you identify who's going to be on that team, what they're going to do as team members, and by when you have a deadline in place. So have that action plan. And the clearer you can be on your action plan, the better and more productive your team will perform. You do that with positional contracts. You do that with system manuals and you do that with scripts. You, you put all these things into place. Um, if you don't have teams, but you just have five employees because your business is small enough, then you're going to, you're going to have an employee handbook. And basically you're going to go through that handbook with your employees and you're going to say, look, these are the expectations for your role, but also for our company. We expect everybody who works here, even if it's just two of you, Everybody who works here, we're going to follow these same guidelines. This is our action plan for success. We have to do it that way. Remember, the, remember what they used to say, and this is so true today, you hire slowly, but you fire fast. In other words, if they're not performing to your standards, if you are doing annual reviews or semi-annual reviews, 
and you're ticking off those boxes of what they are doing, but also what they're not doing, you, you praise them for what's getting done, but you also need to discuss the areas where they're, where they're falling short. Don't hesitate to do that. It's important that you do because if you get to that point, and I was just speaking with a client this morning, she has an employee she needs to let go, but she's hesitant. And I said, well, have you reviewed her performance lately? No, I haven't. That makes it a little bit more difficult sometimes. But if you review that performance with your employees and you go through these things, then when you get to that fateful day that you have to part company with them, it's usually not a surprise why. So make sure that you have those contracts and those manuals in place. Now you have your team and you have to tell them confidently, guys, I support risk taking. What that means is that you're going to let your team make some mistakes. You're going to let your team fall on their face a little bit. Hopefully not too often, but you have to support that. Why is that? Because when do we have a breakthrough? A breakthrough usually happens after a breakdown, a break apart, a breakup, a break with, whatever. When that whole thing goes, you know, people are crying and they're like, ah, all of a sudden it's like, oh, I get it. I get it. Now we made some progress. So be aware that you want to allow those breakthroughs to happen, but they don't just happen without some kind of event, typically. The Japanese have a word for that. They call it Kaizen. Okay. And you know, change is good. Essentially what it means is that constant and never ending improvement or grow plateau, grow plateau. What's that sound like? Sounds like stair steps, right? Um, if you've ever gone, if you ever went to Mexico city, there's, they got shrines down there with just like a gazillion steps, right? And if you want to get to the top, it's one step at a time. And that's the same thing with our businesses grow plateau grow plateau. All right. Last thing is 100% involvement and inclusion. This is so important that as a business owner, you need to make sure that your team leaders, and that might be you, supports 100% involvement and inclusion. Because when you do that, it creates a synergistic atmosphere. One plus one does not equal two anymore. Sometimes it equals three or four or five. It, it keeps growing because everybody's involved. Everybody feels like no idea is a bad idea. We're just putting all ideas on the table right now. How do we do this? If, if you saw, uh, what was it, Apollo Apollo 11? Was that the one, the, the one that they, uh, Tom Hanks movie? Um, and they, they were lost up in space. They couldn't get back. And they said to the, they said to the type C's, right? The, the engineers, how are we bringing them back? And they brought in all these parts that they had available on the spaceship. And they said, they threw them on the table and said, all right, figure this out. All right, there's no bad ideas here, okay? That creates that synergy. Everybody's opinion is valid. Then you lock it in with rituals. And, I, and we spell it this way for a reason because it makes for a richer team. One of the things that we like to do is we, we call it a whiffle. Now, here's what a whiffle is. If you've never done this before, I encourage you to try it tomorrow morning. Get your, get your team together, get your employees together, if it's a smaller business, five, six, seven, eight of you, and you do a, a, you do a whiffle before work begins. You, you pull your chairs into a circle or you can do this standing up. Nobody has any crossed arms or legs. And you say, guys, we're going to do a whiffle this morning. And I'm like, what's a whiffle? What it means is what I feel like expressing, okay? And if you do it in the morning, this is kind of fun because what I feel like expressing this morning is, and you might have a, a mouse, you might have a pen, and you start it and you hand it to the person on your left and say, Bear, what do you feel like expressing? Bear says, what I feel like expressing this morning is, you know what, I've been up since 3.30, I'm really tired, I need a couple more cups of coffee before I'm on my A game. And that's what I feel like expressing. And then and nobody says a word other than thank you, Bear. Nobody comments on the whiffle. And then Bear takes the pen and he passes it over to Jackie to his left. And then Jackie says, what I feel like expressing this morning is I feel, I feel like I'm alive, I'm in charge, I'm ready to go. I just feel really optimistic today. That's what I feel like expressing. And you do that and you go all the way around the room. And what that does is it, it, it helps everybody to get on the same page right away. So if you've never done a whiffle, I encourage you to try it. You know, our founder, Brad Sugars, he started Action Coach 27 years ago. Um, and he said, you know, words can inspire, thoughts can provoke, but only action truly brings you closer to your dreams, right? We talked about that. B times do equals half. We can read all the books, but if we don't take action, nothing's going to change. So I invite everyone here today to get into action. Um, 
If you have any questions about this presentation today, please reach out to us. My phone number has been on the screen the whole time, as well as my name, Lee Iben. I'm the head coach with Action Coach Campus. If you want, if you have questions about improving your team, or you want to know more about that DISC assessment, that personality test, am I a C3PO or am I a Darth Vader? You know, uh, let us know. Uh, generic questions, basic questions. We're here to help you guys out. Uh, that's that's what we do. Uh, we do this lunch and learn every month here at the chamber. You're welcome to come join us in person uh, or tune in next time on Zoom. But we really appreciate you watching today. I'm going to go ahead and stop my screen share. Now I can see everybody again. And um, thank you guys. Thanks all very much. We have some. Uh, I've got a chat here. If I can figure out how to do this chat. Okay, looks like we have a couple of chats there. I'll, I'll address those individually. Well, thank you guys. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Um, have a great day. We ended uh, a little bit early, but I appreciate your time. And so next, next month in September, the first Tuesday of the month, we'll be back here, same time, same channel. Thank you all very much. Take care.